Clark, Curator of the Schenectady County Historical Society. Thank you for joining us for this week's podcast. This week, Bill Buell will be interviewing Maureen Gebhardt, Coordinator of the Schenectady Heritage Area. They'll be talking about the Schenectady Massacre and the Colonial Fest we hold every year to commemorate this attack on Schenectady and the important colonial history. If you'd like to learn more information about Colonial Fest, make sure to check out the city's website, www.cityofschenectady.com. For more information about the Schenectady County Historical Society, check out our website at www.schist.org. That's www.schist.org. Or for the most up-to-date information, you can check us out on Twitter or follow us on Facebook. Thank you. Hello, I'm Bill Buell from the Daily Gazette here in Schenectady. Uh, we are at the Schenectady County Historical Society today talking to Maureen Gebert of the Schenectady Heritage Area. Uh, Maureen, why don't we start out by you telling us what exactly is the Schenectady Heritage Area? Well, it's a program that was designed by the state. Uh, we bought into it in 1986. Um, we got a lot of money to build the visitor center, which is now at the museum. And they've done a lot for the city of Schenectady. There's a special area that's considered the heritage area, which is the heart of the city. We used to be called Urban Cultural Park. So we've been around for a long time, and we do things like tours and brochures and special events, all within our core um, area within the city. And how long have you been involved since the very beginning? No, I've been here since 95. Um, Okay. Uh, we're going to talk about the Colonial uh, Festival that's being held in a few weeks in the city. Um, but first, uh, you also do tours of the stockade, right? I do. Mm -hmm. uh, are they being held this time of year? or tell We us actually, about them? one of the uh, Colonial Festivals, we did do what we called a Shivering Stockade Walking Tour. And it was, sure. well, yeah, it was cold and, and icy and people were slipping and crawling over snowbanks. So we decided that probably wasn't the best. So I when do you hold your tours? Then? Well, uh, we don't do we don't have regularly scheduled ones. We do them for people for special you know occasions like weddings or um, conferences that come into town and things like that. We also do every Friday night we do um, stockade ghost tours. That's in October, mm -hmm. every Friday night in October. And typically, what does the tour consist of? How long is it, and what do people see? Well, it's a little less than an hour because people get kind of tired if they're walking much more than that. And we we go down by the river and. Um, you know, around the Indian, wherever's interesting. And it takes about an hour? Just about an hour, yeah. Uh, Maureen, if you can summarize the massacre uh, for us, uh, for people who don't know that much about it. Uh, when did it happen, why, and, and all that kind of stuff? Well, 1690, um, it, was, it was about 200 men came down from Canada. Um, probably over 100 were Frenchmen and the rest were Native Americans praying praying Indians, they were called, because some of them were converted to Christianity. It took them about three weeks, and they were walking through the miserable weather that we have here in the Northeast for three weeks. Um, and of course, we had our thaw, too, so occasionally they'd be walking, and suddenly the ice would break, and they'd find themselves knee-deep in freezing water. So it was a miserable walk. Um, they got down here, and they were undecided whether they would go to Albany or Schenectady. And evidently, they felt that they were not prepared to take on Albany at this point, so they came to Schenectady. A little stop on the way, and Al paused to uh, warm up and have something to eat. At, there was some uh, Native American women who lived there at the time. And then they came over. They were going to wait till 2 in the morning, but instead they came over at 11 because there was a terrible blizzard. They went around to the south gate, which would be where Nick State Street is now, uh, and they found it frozen shut. So we, they came around to the north gate. And they found the gates wide open, guarded by snowmen, the legend goes. They came in quietly, and they stood seven, eight men in front of each house. When they were all in place, they let out a war hoop, and they proceeded to break down the doors with their axes and the butts of their gun. And they just massacred whomever they could find, man, woman, or child, it didn't matter. They just killed whomever they could. Um, in the end of it, about 60 people were killed. Maybe another 25 lost limbs trying to flee in the snow, and they took about 27 prisoners north with them. And they would have taken more if not for uh, Johannes Glenn across the river. That is true, yes. He, um, he, they called him over, and he came over to pick out his relatives. They weren't going to take his relatives, and he began to pick so many people that they began to be suspicious that no one could have that many relatives. But they also did something which I found kind of interesting. Um, they talked them out of uh, taking the women. 
because the women had long dresses and it would slow them down in the snow. So they didn't take any women, they just took the men and the, and the boys. And do we know what happened to most of those 27 captives? Those that went with the Indians very often uh, came back, and maybe lived in Schenectady again, or were happy with the Indian tribes. Those that went with the French were not often heard from again. While we're talking about the Schenectady massacre, I should point out that behind us is a very historical painting by Schenectady native Samuel Sexton. He lived from, I believe it was 1810 to 1890, and in the middle of the century painted this very popular image of the Schenectady Massacre. Um, it was used in textbooks for years and still is. Um, however, our current curator and, and librarian uh, feel that the uh, painting was not historically accurate. The houses wouldn't have looked the way they do. They wouldn't have had gable roofs. Uh, the Indians would have been wearing more clothes, uh, leg stockings, stuff like that. So as a result, um, this painting still is very near and dear to our hearts here at the Historical Society, but two years ago we did commission Len Tantillo of Albany to paint a new uh, image of this Connectedy Massacre, which is currently on display in the Netherlands, but it will be back here um, at, a labor, at a later date. He um, painted a scene without any violence in it, but it's historically accurate. He researched uh, what the houses would have looked like in uh, colonial New York during the 1690s, and it's a very lovely, beautiful painting. Um, Samuel Sexton uh, was a very popular painter. He painted a lot of portraits. He's probably better known for his portraits, although he did do some landscapes, uh, including the painting that is behind us now. You're from Duxbury, Massachusetts, you told me. You yeah. came here in the early 90s, or? No, much earlier than Much that. earlier than Not 1690, no. Okay, well, what did you know about Schenectady history, and what did you do to research uh, the massacre? Well, I, when, when I came to Schenectady, it was just amazing. I can't say I knew that much about it, but there's so many people that love the history here that everywhere you turn, somebody was telling you something new. Mm -hmm. So and it, just, it just grabs you. And then when you started uh, preparing for the tours, did you actually immerse yourself in the history here or the library to find out about the massacre? Uh, the, not so much the massacre, but other parts of it I did. We've got wonderful old newspapers in the library, all kinds of resources that are really great. It tells you what life was like, you know, from a personal point of view. Mm -hmm. um, there's some excellent uh, scrapbooks in the History Center at, at City Hall. Uh, when you take people on your tours of the stockade, uh, what is it that they're, they're most interested in about the area? What is it that surprises them the most about it and fascinates them? Well, actually I would say it is the massacre because the question is always why. Um, even school groups, they usually will ask why it happened. And well, do you have that answer for them? I, well, I do. There, well, of course, there are many reasons, but what I generally tell them, it was part of the um, European conflict to claim the New World. Mm -hmm. I, if I get into more detail, then I tell about um, what is the uh, what is the town near Montreal, Le Chien? Le Chien? Le Chien. Le Chien. Yeah, thank you. Um, that w the British did the same thing to Le Chien, um, and they did that in retaliation for the French taking uh, fifty sachems. Um, to Marseille, France, where they were never seen again. Mm -hmm. So it was just one thing after another. Um, tell us a little bit about Johannes Glenn, or I guess if we Americanize it, we call it John Alexander Glenn. Uh, who was he? Um, I believe he lived right across the river in Scotia. In, the, in Glenn Sanders' mansion, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, he, was, um, he was a trader. Um, he was friends with the Indians. Um, there are a lot of stories. Did you ever do the tour? It, not, it's not one of my tours, but the tour of Glenn Sanders' mansion. No, they I talk about the priest that um, got through that the keyhole yeah. and mm -hmm. all that right. sort of thing. Yes, mm -hmm. he had he had a, a nice home over there, which I guess the Glenn Sanders is made from the same building, but mm -hmm. it has been moved back a little bit. Right, back from the river. Yeah. Um, tell us a little bit about Adam Broman. Do people know that name, and, and are they amazed when they hear his story? They are. Um, it depends what, what the person's background is, but the story I always tell them is about during the massacre. He lived on the house, in a house on the corner where the um, First Reformed Church parking lot is, and he had a Dutch door in his house. His uh, wife was shot holding the baby. She was thought shot because she was standing near the doorway. 
and uh, they, took, they took the baby from her and threw it against the side of the house. His young daughter took another child and ran. But he continued to shoot and shoot and shoot until finally they said to him, please stop. If you stop, we won't hurt you. And he did stop. And they didn't hurt him. And he um, left Schenectady for a while, came back, got married, and had eight more children. <laughs> and um, He's one of our heroes. Right. Tell us a little bit about Simon Skirmahorn. What was his role in the massacre? Well, Simon um, got on his horse in his nightshirt and rode the 16 miles to Albany. It took him, he didn't get there until like 5 in the morning. The horse was shot and died. Um, but he gave warning. He, he told the uh, Albanians what had happened, and they sent troops out to, or people out to help the Schenectadians. And is Lawrence the uh, Mohawk Indian? Is he a mythical character, or was he a real person, do you think? Oh, he was real. He was real. He didn't look anything like the statue, but... <laughs> no, he was real, and I understand he actually went after the um, invaders and got some of the, uh, well, maybe three prisoners back. Mm -hmm. um, well, tell, tell us a little bit about the Colonial Festival. Uh, there are a lot of different events going on. Uh, what are you going to be in charge of or most concerned with? Is there a lot going on? Um, the wonderful thing about this is everybody does their own thing. <laughs> you know, they, they manage it, they handle it, and all they do is give me what they're going to do. And we've got some great events. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, the Historical Society is one of the best. They've just got some wonderful things planned. In fact, they already had one program this past um, Saturday or the past weekend. Right. Were you here? I missed it, but uh, Cal Welch and Carol Welch and their maps were here. Yes. Yeah, that is wonderful. In front of a packed house. I Was guess. it again? Yeah. Oh, that's great. Well, uh, the First Reformed is doing something as well? They're going to have their, uh, well, it's their 330th anniversary, and they're going to have a rededication Sunday. Um, and then in the evening, there's Vespers. Oh, and they're having you. Oh, right. Forgot yeah. about that. <laughs> You're at 11, aren't you? I Pre think so. Presenting yeah. your new book? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Um, are the, the three churches in the stockade, are they on your tour when you, when you have a tour? Um, they're always very cooperative, but we generally don't go into the churches. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, well, that would require somebody being there to open them up? Yeah, it's, you know, it's, it can be a little bit of a burden if they're all volunteers. Mm -hmm. um, and when do the tours start up? I know there's nothing scheduled, but typically in the summer months, or do you wait until the fall? Well, you know, we get a lot of school groups. So when the weather starts to get warm, the teachers call, and uh, we'll do a lot of uh, tours for like fourth grade particularly. They're always fun. Mm -hmm. um, and there's no charge if it's during the weekday. We don't charge for the school groups to come through. Uh, were you always interested in history, Maureen? Yes, yes, actually. And when and why did it start, do you think? Well, um, since you brought up Duxbury, Massachusetts, it's right near where the Pilgrims, you know, Plymouth and the Pilgrims, and John and Priscilla Alden used to go up our driveway to visit, um, oh, of course we didn't live there at the time, but right. to, to <laughs> visit their daughter in Marshfield, so um, mm -hmm. there's always been a connection there. Mm -hmm. uh, and was history a subject you studied a lot in school or college, or not really? Were you involved in other things? More in other things, I think. Mm -hmm. it, this has just been sort of a blessing to, to find all this here. Mm -hmm. Um, is there anything else we need to uh, talk about or discuss about the Colonial Festival weekend or anything coming up in the spring? Well, in the Colonial Festival, um, you, you'll be able to uh, get the schedule of events online at the city website mm -hmm. uh, starting next Monday. And um, I, don't know, I think this is about our 15th year doing it, so uh, mm -hmm. we've always had some fun things. One year, the Y did free family swimming which was kind of neat in the middle of winter to go swimming. <laughs> Are we going to uh, recreate the mayor's ride? Uh, no. The mayor, the mayor will not be riding a horse to Albany. No, he, he won't this year. Simulating no. Simon Skirmerhorn's ride, I should say. Yeah, no, he's not doing it this year. He did it for the bicentennial. And, okay, but not for 2010. Okay. No, no. Okay. Uh, Maureen Guppert from the Schenectady Heritage Area, thank you very much for being with us today. Thank you.